In this video, I'd like to do exercise 2.2.1D from John Hammond's notes. Uh, it asks us to prove the identity given here, the set identity, the A union, the intersection of B and C. That's the same as A union B intersected with A union C. Now, in the video in the note slides, I made an error, actually. I, uh, it's actually pretty pretty egregious error, so I apologize for that. We'll fix that here, though, in, in this video and in the next video, and I will eventually go back and, and fix the video in the note slides, but if you've already watched that video, then it's a little too late, so again, I apologize. But um, one of the ideas here, if we want to prove this identity, we need to use what was number listed as number 5 from definition 2.2.1 in his notes, and that definition says that A is equal to B. So two sets are equal to each other. Let's change the letters here, actually. Let's say X is equal to Y, just so that we're not using the same letters from the example that we want to do here. <laughs> but X is equal to Y if and only if X is contained in Y and uh, X contains Y. So Y is contained in X. So you can write this this way. You could also write this as Y is contained in X in the, the same order here, right? But you, we have to show, if we want to prove that these two sets are equal, we have to show both of these, right? We have to prove both of these containments. And in the example, or in the video, in the notes that I made, in my notes, my, my lecture slides, um, I only did one direction, right? I only did one direction, and that's not enough. It's really not enough. So uh, we'll fix that here. So the idea is we need to start with one side, show that it's contained in the other side, and then we have to do it again, right, starting with the other side and going in reverse. So let, I'm going to draw these as like two different arrows. Well, maybe I'll use the actual symbols, right? So I'll do containment this way first. So I'm going to show, I'm going to start with an element on the left-hand side and show that it must also live on the right-hand side. All right, so let's do it. So let's say X is an element of A union B intersects C. And at this point, again, um, what was correct is that we haven't really talked about formal proofs yet. And so all we're going to do is just draw some arrows and write down some, some consequences of this, right? So this union is like the disjunction from our logic notation. So this says that X is in A or X is in B intersects C, right? And this implies then that X is in A, that part's done, or, and then over here, this becomes an and, right? X is in B and X is in C. And so I'm just basically replacing the set symbols with their logical equivalent operators, right? Their equivalent logical operators. But every time I do that, I have to write down the element that I'm working with, right? So I started with this element X that's in this set. And at this point, um, we then just, you know, break this down this way. And so at this point, the logical operator, uh, or, has to distribute over this and symbol here. It distributes over the and symbol. So X is in B, and X is in C, or X is in A, right? And so another way to write this is that X is in A, or X is in B. All right, so that takes care of those two and X is in A, or X is in C, all right? And so to make sure that this is the same, right? So we've got our X is in B and X is in C, right? And at this point, we also have our X is in A or either one of these, right? And so now at this point, we can just rewrite these things one by one, right? So this one says now that X is in the union of A and B, right? Or X is in the union of A and C. And then one more step from here, uh, you just combine all this, right? You just pull the, pull, get rid of this disjunction right here. So this means that X is in the union of A and B intersected with the union of A and C. All right? So that's containment that way. So what we've show, shown then so we can write this as therefore, uh, what we have then is that A union B intersect C is contained in, it's a subset of, right, A union B intersected with A union C. We now need to show the other direction though, so we're not done, right, we're not done. 
So let's do it then. So the other direction, the containment's got to go this way, right? So this time we start with let x be an element of this set on the right hand side. So x is an element of A union B intersected with A uh, union C. All right, and at this point we just start uh, decomposing this the same way that we did. It's going to look very similar. It's almost like going directly in reverse, right? So uh, if we're careful about it, maybe you could write this in a way that you just reverse all the arrows here. Um, but it's good practice to write it out a second time, at least the first time that you're doing these proofs. So first of all, this means, so this, this uh, intersection here is a logical and, right? So x is in A union B and x is in A union C. And then each of these unions can be written as a disjunction, right? So now we have x is in A or x is in B, and x is in A or x is in C, all right? <clears throat> and again, at this point, we've got, we see that we have this logical disjunction here, which can in some sense be like almost factored out. So this is one of our rules from a couple days ago from section 2.0. Uh, one of the notes, this is one of the rules, right? And this, this it was a logical equivalence, I believe. Um, so what comes out of here then, right? And we can just use those logical equivalences. That's, that's kind of the point here. This whole thing gets factored out. And so we get X is in A or, and now we have this, dis, uh, sorry, the conjunction uh, inside of the parentheses, right? X is in B and X is in C. And at this point, now we just uh, unpack these things, right? So we're almost done. So X is in A, or now this becomes a union, right? So X is in the union of B, sorry, an intersection, intersection for the, for the conjunction. So B intersects C, all right? And then just get rid of this disjunction here. That one's the one that becomes the union. So this tells us then that X is in A union, B intersect with C, all right? And at this point, we have shown that the right-hand side, usually, it's going to be on the left now the way I'm writing it, but A union B intersected with A union C is a subset of A union B intersect C, right? And at now we see, let's, let me get my highlighter out. I like using this highlighter. So we have containment in one direction, subset in one direction. We have the subset in the other direction, right? And so because we have both of these subsets, both of these containments, then we can say, now at this point, we can say that these two sets must be equal to each other, all right? So A union, the intersection of B with C, is actually equal to, as a set, A union B intersected with A union C, all right? And re remember, our symbol that we put at the end of our proofs is like a a morbid tombstone with a smiley face. Now, um, why do we have to go both ways, right? Because this argument, all this argument says is that if A is in this set, then it's also in this set, but there could be more stuff, right? There could be more stuff in this set that we don't know about, that we, we haven't seen yet. And that's why we have to repeat the argument in the other direction as well. And if you compare these two, these two arguments that we've made, um, you can probably see that all these arrows can be just reversed, right? They can be written as double arrows, and then this can be done in one fell swoop, um, which is probably what I meant to do. I'm, I'm kind of rewriting history here, but what I meant to do in the lecture slides, uh, but I didn't do that, okay? And it was it's very confusing, so I apologize for that. And here's an example of the correct way to prove a set equivalence.